to 1952. So it's a couple of years newer than the car itself on hubcap and wheel trim polishing duties. 1966. What a beauty that is. Well, good evening folks, welcome to the old classic car channel and you find me with sponge and bucket of suds. Just about to give the oldie V8 Pilot a bit of a sprucing up. Uh, it's a Friday evening and we had, well I had originally planned, to go over to Crewe for the Heritage Centre. I'm not sure we've had this one to Crewe before and uh, the plan was to take this one over there and just see what else was going to turn up but a couple of people separately reminded me today that Sunday is also day two of Marbury Merry Days which is a bit of a village fate type affair a little away from here and I thought well what a great opportunity to give the pilot a bit of a run out head down there and see what other vehicles turn up because even though it is a village fate village fair kind of thing there is a little bit of everything you get battle reenactments and you know, dog training and uh, that kind of thing. Um, but there are usually uh, several cars in attendance, various old tractors as well. So I thought, well, it's a lovely evening this evening, as you can see. One of those rare blue sky evenings, which we don't seem to have had very often lately. So I thought, well, I'll give it a wash tonight. It can be drying off and then tomorrow we can clean the windows and do all that kind of thing. Well, there we go, all washed, just purring away. Let's have a couple of nice runs this evening now. Just took it out again to dry it off. And then tomorrow, I'll just go around it, clean the chrome up, maybe clean the windows, that kind of thing. Just spruce her up a little bit. You'll notice the, uh, the repainted header tank, the radiator header tank, and also the twin horns. I think they look a bit more in keeping. Yeah, it's nice to have it out. Quite how many cars go to the Marbury Merry Days, I'm not quite sure. I've not been before. Mrs OCC and the youthful assistant have both been in previous years. I believe there is a fly past of a couple of Battle of Britain Memorial Flight Spitfires are due. So all being well, that'll happen. Uh, like I say, should be a few cars, tractors, a few displays, and just hopefully a fairly laid back day. Last weekend it was Goresworth Hall, and the day before that, Thorsby Park. So that was a pretty full-on couple of days, so this hopefully will be a somewhat more leisurely affair. Well, morning folks, it's the next day. A bit more preparation work, and I thought I would just give the the old Bakelite dash a bit of the treatment just to bring up the shine. For the job I used some of this old quick wax polish. Now this dates to 1952 so it's a couple of years newer than the car itself but that's about as close as I can get I think. But as well as working quite nicely this old school polish and bringing it up really really nicely. Note the uh, tax disc holder as well as bringing it up and giving it a lovely sheen it also smells just right so if I you know if you close the door and then open the door get inside as well as sort of the old leathery smell which you always get with old cars and which you can't replicate and is often lost when you have a car retrimmed you also get the smell of this lovely old polish and it just completes it sets the scene really for motoring early 1950s style so uh, I hadn't really thought about it until today because obviously I like using the old stuff 
but the smell is something that often gets forgotten when it comes to old cars and uh, you often get a bit of a petroly smell or a bit of an oily smell but to have the smell of correct in period polish as well when you step inside this car which dates to 1950 it's just an extra little level of authenticity i think maybe i'm overthinking this a little bit but it just adds to it a little bit i think and it also works so it's a win-win really the old kodak 127 which also happens to be made out of bakelite and indeed the correct rac handbook for the year of the car I'm a bit of a sucker for period stickers and I found these in an old garage plus a gazillion leather key fobs for a garage in stoke on trump way but yeah I'm a bit of a sucker for this kind of thing these are proper old stickers that don't drain my shell antifreeze and a little penguin so I've just put one of those in the windscreen because well why not also got a stack of shell super oil stickers so you put the mileage on the left bit on the smaller sticker and stick that under the bonnet to remind you when to do your next oil change got a little do not drain castrol antifreeze label here and this would have been on a little bit of wire and you would tie that somewhere under the bonnet and it would dangle away and remind you every time you open the bonnet here again engine filled with shell x100 motor oil or indeed this is a little bit later, BP Super Visco Static. What's this, 1970s probably, something like that. Youthful assistant on hubcap and wheel trim polishing duties. That's good to see. How's it going, young man? Wonderful. Wonderful indeed. Well, morning all, it's Sunday morning, and we are here at the Small Village Fete, which is, I think is in its 43rd occurrence of the Marbury Merry Days. There are a few cars here already, it's not a huge car turnout, but hopefully it'll just be a nice relaxing morning out on a much smaller scale compared to many of the shows we've been to recently, and that'll be quite welcome to be honest. So we'll just uh, hover around, video a bit, and then head back home later on this afternoon but yeah really hopefully it'll just be an interesting little day there's various demonstrations of radio controlled aircraft we've got the uh, battle reenactors just getting ready over there i can just see an mgc roadster coming in as well <laughs> we've even brought color coordinated chairs Small, little, and very, very large. The Lotus Cortina is a familiar face on the channel, but less so is this immaculate Morris Marina Super. What a great car! This is in incredible condition, and this one is for sale. A slice of BL history there, the Marina Super, no less. Here are the details if you wish to acquire said vehicle. Proper original plates on it as well. Unipart stamped, no less. I'm sure they've been on since new. Bond a keep or a queep. 1966. A triumph based.
still setting up all sorts of little stalls here today at this village fete all very very agreeable beautiful day as well which certainly certainly helps for here 65 Cortina Mark 1 GT left hand drive no less oh, what a great looking car that is two Mark 1 uh, Cortinas here today so far will there be any more I wonder either way what a beauty this one is it's got a very racy base mounted Lucas 476 lamp on the back this will be coupled up to the uh, reverse light switch to give you extra illumination if reversing promptly during a night rally and that's the theory behind those these are also fitted to the front of the Daimler V8 250 I think I spotted the distinctive roof line of a Lancia Fulvia. Fine turnout of classic minis today. We've got a clubman over here, is it a 1275 GT? Looks very purposeful with those extra lamps. Reminds me of the old special tuning minis of the early 70s. Not sure I've ever seen that beauty before. What a great example that is. Classic Range Rover. I spy a very rare Gilburn Estate. The big V6 engine, electric fan whirring away. Riley is represented here today at Marbury Merry Days too, thanks to this lovely 1950s Riley RM saloon. Inside the Trojan. Oof, a PC Ace. Oh, I know someone who's going to like that one. No, no. What a beauty that is. Regulars to the old classic car channel may well recognise this deep bumper XK 140. This is a regular at the Commonwealth car meeting over at the old Piggery Cafe. What a stunning car that is! Painted wires, just perfect.
and he was the CEO of John Deere Tractors. Well, it's a handy history sheet in the window. Previous owners include Bob Gerrard and Tony Brooks. Of course, it's a it's quite beautiful. But I had the what's that when I? Yeah, I've got to say if I don't want to. No, no, no. Yes, yes. There's the local star, late 1920s, I forget the exact year, Wolverhampton built. Lovely interior in this vintage star. Proper aged seats. Ooh, what's that? Next to that, the magnificent R-type Bentley. R-type standard saloon, 1954. Bonnet raised on the TVR, Ford Essex V6. Great to see this lovely MG Tourer here today. I spy a little bit of information in the window of this rare Gilburn Invader estate. One of only 104 built between 1969 and 1972, only a few left on their own, had a full body off restoration now for sale. And here's the Herald based Bond Equipe or a Keep. Many, many Herald fe uh, things feature here. Herald based doors with slightly modified door windows. The chassis Herald, suspension, engine, running gear. The bulkhead and all around the windscreen is Triumph Herald. And then to that, a fiberglass Bond front and rear end are grafted on. Hence the Bond to keep GT. I've never ever seen this one before. The Triumph seats as well. Triumph base dash, of course. Yeah, rare car now. Next to us is the Renault 21 that we have seen over at Crew Heritage Centre on several occasions, also Hopley House, that particular car meet. And in fact, the Crew Heritage meeting is on this morning, sadly we're going to miss it, but instead we thought, well, we'll come here, give this one a go. A couple of classic triumphs over there. Fun dog show. 
Very nice, 70s Triumph Bonneville, the 750. This is the, these are the American spec, California spec handlebars, a bit more upright compared to those on British bikes, even those are fairly upright as well. But these are very much the American style. Another Mini Arrival, the Mini 35 limited edition, celebrating 35 years of Mini production at the time, and that is joined by an immaculate Morris Minor Traveller. Mickey's on guard duty today in the V8 Pilot. Some great little details on these British built Trojans. Of course, this was like a license built Heinkel. Look at those great little hinges. So the engine hides under there. A dinky little folding roof, a fold back roof. Here's a late arrival, a Hillman Avenger Tiger no less, the sporty souped up version of the 1970s Hillman Avenger. All these very distinctive graphics, a bright yellowy orange colour, the logos down the side, the rear wing. Oh, that's a great to see that here today. All looks very stripped out and purposeful in here, bucket seats, got a roll cage, got a footrest, foot brace for the navigator stroke co-driver. Oh no children, he's got me nose! There's going to be a few classic tractors here. We've got a Fords and Super Dexter next to the Marshall 802. And here, a Fords and Dexter. A grey Fergie with lamps. Look at this fantastic Massey Harris. If ever there was a vehicle that you could call an oily ragger, this is it. Isn't that incredible? You just about make out the original decals on the side there and over here, Massey Harris. Isn't that incredible? A little butler lamp there. Ex-war department. The top of the cowl here, this reminds me of sort of like a pre-war and immediately post-war Vauxhall, very very similar style. Perkins diesel power. Well, it's not on show, but tucked away around the back is this really rare Toyota Alphard or Alphard V6. Obviously, a special import Japanese car, but I've never seen one of those on a 55 plate, so 2005. So, nearly 20 years old, but very unusual. Sliding rear doors. <laughs> Can't say I've ever seen one of those before. The average soldier, by the way, carries everything with him. Um, the equipment they're wearing is very similar to modern equipment. On the front of the soldier, you can see there's a cap pouch which contains the caps that go on the end of his gun. There you go, you, are, you get the bait at this time.
the 1600 Capri Mark 1, the facelift car, has been in the same ownership from new. Bit of info in the window here. All the cars are going into the arena. Dad will be joining them in the Ford V8 Pilot. And I am on camera duties for his channel and my channel at the moment. As I'll try to get a little clip of him along with all the other lovely classic cars rolling around the arena. Pause before the next one comes through. Yeah. There are some over there. Classic cars in, more classic cars into the arena. I saw those come in early. And so what have we got here? Now this is a fine car sir. Now I'm going to have to talk to the other side because this is a left hand drive. And I am not really recognising this one. He's not that old, I would guess. How old is he? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, now this is a car I've always wanted to have, a TVR, they have lovely. So which one is it? It's called a 3000S, uh, 1978. And what model is it? It's, it's a 3000 Hey, hey, okay, let's go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Now I don't think your car is going straight to do a wheel spin like that, is it? Certainly not, no. What have we got? Uh, uh, Ford V8 Pilot, 19.6, 3.6 V8. Uh, so, based on American pre-war car, we're built in 19. Oh! Right, very quick word, what have we got? Sass and Martin. Oh, Aston and Martin. Yeah, okay. if you can pass both to move to the ground. So, that is the real car for James Bond car. back in place, pointing the other way around, but never mind, pulling it up just to let things cool off a bit. It's a bit slow sometimes going in these parades, but it's interesting all the same.
Well, there we go. That was a very pleasant day here. That's the Marbury Merry Days 2024. Like I said, this is the first time I've been here. Certainly the first time we brought any car here. And yeah, hopefully we'll be back again in future years. It's been a really, really nice little day out. Not too big, not too much legwork, just very, very pleasant. So thank you so much for watching. Please have a look around the rest of the channel. I include links to a couple more videos at the end of this one, should you wish to partake in a little extra classic car related viewing. So thanks very much. Please like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of thing. And there'll be many, many more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now.